Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. Uh, thanks for coming to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm an e-learning video evangelist here for e-learning e brothers. Today we're going to be talking about what you missed at ELBX. It was the uh, first user conference for e-learning brothers and it happened earlier this week. So we want to talk about that, let you guys know um, what you missed out on if you weren't able to go. Uh, this webinar will be recorded. We'll post it on our website later in, uh, actually probably early next week. If you have questions during the webinar, feel free to use that questions panel. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can and, uh, and, and make sure that you have the information that you need to talk to us about ELBX. We have our Director of Marketing, Zach Batty, here with us today. Hello. And our Conference Coordinator, uh, Drew Young, here to chat with us as Hello. well. And uh, so this should, be really, <laughs> this should be really fun. We are feeling Hi, very low right. stress as you can tell we're we've relaxed the conference mm -hmm. happened so, yeah we're on uh, we're on some uh a new cloud nine i guess that's true um one of the Board things we nine. like to do after webinars is follow up as soon as possible to see if anybody needs uh any clarification after the webinar um we'll see if if that is necessary with our uh, today's topic i don't know why we're laughing <laughs> apologize also we're going to be giving everyone a free eLearning Brothers account if you don't already have one. So be checking your email for that. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about ELBX. First of all, what is ELBX? That's a question that we got a lot. What does the X stand for? Experience? No. Extravaganza? Perhaps. The thing about the X is it really is a variable. Is it a factor? Yes, it's a factor of seven. No. The X, uh, <laughs> no, as we were thinking about it, really, the X, we wanted to keep the X as a as a variable. It's an unknown. Yeah, because you never know what you're going to get with ELB. And so, kind of the people that come are the X, right? Mm -hmm. We're the ELB, they're the X, and together we make ELB X. That's true. I'm going to launch this poll really quickly. <laughs> I want to know. Uh, if anybody in our audience actually attended ELBX and is just here to uh, to find out what's what was uh, what they may have missed by going to one breakout session as opposed to another breakout session, so go ahead and vote. Let me know if you were at ELBX. Um, we had a lot of people there. I think a lot of the people that went are still at Learning Dev Camp and not watching webinars. So there's probably not a good chance that there's a lot of you here that did attend. I'll give you a few more seconds to vote. Three two one okay here's those results um 100 of you did not go to elbx we so, missed you oh, so man. much this yeah is, wow <laughs> this i thought i good. didn't recognize your faces it was a great conference but it could have been greater had mm -hmm. you all been there more x's yes so here's what what happened at elbx in the morning we had a huge lineup of some great speakers um, and then in the afternoon we broke out into uh, mix and match breakout sessions, I guess is how you describe it. Um, would you two mind talking to us about uh, the speaking list for the morning? Um, it's something that we spend a lot of time working on and really trying to find the absolute best people who um, would would really help kick off the LBX and make it what it what it was set the tone for the, the level of quality of uh, information and and just kind of the feeling really for uh what we wanted to accomplish and so um the people that we got we were super pleased with and they did an excellent job yeah i think one thing as we were in the planning session is we didn't just want to get the same names that you see at every conference and those are great presenters and and they nail their topic so there's nothing wrong with that but we just wanted to try to mix it up a little bit and that's why you know, we tried to reach outside of the standard e-learning presenter realm. And I think we had a pretty fantastic list. Yeah, I mean, some of those people, of course, you know, in the e-learning world, you're gonna know, but I don't, you haven't seen this combination of people and you haven't seen, um, I don't know, the, this just the combination of all of the topics together. And we did throw in people that you're not gonna see elsewhere that did speak to e-learning, like mm -hmm. Sean Bott was someone that, you probably haven't seen it at an e-learning conference, but what he what he spoke to really added uh, an important um, element. Yep, I think. Yep, for sure. Excellent. 
uh, the afternoon breakout sessions, um, when I say mix and match, uh, you didn't have to sign up to go to a business solutions and then get stuck seeing maybe information that you weren't uh, interested in. So you may have wanted to see Todd Cummings and Rich Bass talk about uh, business solutions and then go on to the creative juice and see Nick Brown and Bill Milstead talk about vector graphics and then go in and hang out with Dr. Honors Gronstadt about uh, VR. In fact, that was really cool and he yeah, demonstrated some. One. So VR, and we'll get more into that. But um, another big thing I wanted to point out about the morning sessions is that's a lot of people in in like a keynote role. Um, each of these people only spoke for about 20 minutes. And so we got a very compressed and specific bit of information yeah. from each of them. And it was phenomenal. I think we had a ton of great feedback about that and doing it a little bit differently. What inspired that change? I think that was Drew's idea. I'm not sure. I'll probably take credit for it eventually. You can take credit now. Thank you. Um, really, it was TED Talks, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, you know, there there are amazing conferences where one person can get up and really um, hold your attention and, and give you so much in an hour. But we wanted to be able to give powerful, short messages. I, I love TED Talks, and I think that's part of why I thought that that would be a good um strategy here uh was that there was so much that people got in in each different uh yeah. segment very digestible awesome so let's let's dig into those morning sessions really quick we started off uh with a big kickoff launch with andrew there and curtis and uh our friend um I, I don't know who to call him gene simmons we'll say gene simmons yeah. officially it's the art of gene Art of Gene, okay, with his e-learning brother's wings. Um, and they kicked us off and, and made sure to let everybody know what was gonna be coming, and it was really exciting. Um, there was a huge uh, buzz there in the air. And then we jumped into our first speaker. Um, just any thoughts you guys have as we move through these? I tell you, as um, like Andrew said before, we are going to be kind of producing these and releasing them out to our uh, attendees and to our members here. but. Anyone who heard our presentations knows that they were fantastic, and Dr. Scott Baird was unbelievable, very yeah. motivating. Yeah, he's a powerful speaker, and and he really, I thought it was awesome to have him uh, just jump right in to, you know, because in introducing it all, we had like a fun video that kind of gave some ELD culture and some things, and then uh, adding to that with Curtis and Andrew. And then, boom, it was like a sucker punch with Scott Baird. Like, he really jumped in, and it was a powerful, uh, I felt, very motivational um, presentation. Yeah, few people knew that instructional designers actually won the Revolutionary War for us. Yeah, but... It sounds yeah. like we're making a joke, but that's, that's what his presentation was about. It was incredible. Yeah. It was really, really cool. Um, after Dr. Baird, we had uh, Sean Bott come up. Uh, he was a part of our evening entertainment, but gave us a great idea of how you can make learning fun and gave us some great examples. Um, he brought lots of different people up on the stage and had them uh, participate in his presentation. And I, I had to slip this image in there as well. He mildly disrobed and placed his foot on uh, Darl, Dr. Carl Kopp's and, hand and then was able to Measure how many yeah. pennies he was holding. Yeah. Discern through his really foot and Carl's hand. Grotesquely creepy <laughs> in all the right ways. Yeah. It was good. It was fun. As you can see, no one is crying there on the stage. So I don't think it Carl was. Carl was laughing a bit nervously. He, he was a darn good sport about He had us. a lot of good tweets. If you don't follow Dr. Carl Kopp on Twitter, you should. Um, but he made sure to comment on that. Okay. And it was good. Okay. It wasn't a negative comment. Um, after Sean. Uh, we had Catherine Nelson. Um, how did how did we snag Catherine Nelson? How did we get so lucky? Uh, she's a, an associate of Curtis's. Curtis Morley, our president. And, um, and we really need to do a shout out to Catherine. She bails out. We had, uh, as is common with these conferences, we had some last minute scheduling changes. Some uh, presenters couldn't come in, and she came in in the eleventh hour through it and completely, not only did us a favor and saved us, but really blew everybody away i mean yeah. she is a fantastic presenter her ideas were amazing and so 
a real hooray debt of gratitude there. She yeah. talked about how to get a more diverse leadership team and to create better uh, materials and products based off of that diversity. Yeah. And uh, she gave some some sobering statistics when it came to the uh, diversity in the upper echelons of of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of sobering, the, the statistics she shared. Very cool. Um, after Catherine, then Dr. Carl Kopp came up after washing his hands <laughs> and uh, talked to us about games. He's he's the the game master for sure when it comes to e-learning. What were some thoughts you guys had on Dr. Carl Kopp's? For one thing, I just like the guy. Yes. Like, I mean, aside from his uh, presentation and the, the information that was there, he's a super likable guy and a very entertaining presenter. Um, having said that, that doesn't lessen the uh, the quality of the presentation of, of the information that he shared. Like it was, it was really. I think that was one where I almost kind of saw people leaning in a little bit. Yeah, very approachable, high quality guy. Yeah. Plus, we found out that some made up game company is making a e learning game called Dragomon Go. So that was cool. <laughs> That's cool. Um, then we broke for a uh, break, quick intermission, and then came back to e-learning improv. I don't know what to say about this one. Thoughts? I, I have no idea either. I'll take this Who one. Who is that in that picture? That is our very own Drew Young, Ivan Bigney, and Jeff Sprogue. And uh, so at ELB, these three guys all do improv on the side. Uh, and so they were gracious enough to come and do a 20-minute set with us. And it was hilarious yeah uh, pulling people up on stage we had a good time with it it's it may seem like an odd fit if you weren't there and uh to be fair some of it was like hey let's get some some energy yeah, yeah. and shake things up a little bit but there really is some application between what improv uh artists do and and e-learning sometimes you're thrown the most random course and you've just got to put it together and make it work and that's a real improv mentality. And so um, it was fun to bring that element into the conference. Well, and I think this part, you know, as we were planning ELBX, this really shows that we didn't want to be a Me Too conference. That's a phrase that came up over and over and over again. We didn't just want to have great presenters, great speak out se or breakout sessions, a nice lunch, a uh, networking dinner, and then everybody goes home. We wanted it to be different. And so that's one of the reasons why we said, yeah, let's spend 20 minutes and do an improv show with some loose tie-ins to e-learning. But yeah, it was 90% entertainment, 10%, I don't know what the percentages are. Is that 100%? <laughs> yeah, that's 100% underneath. But uh, we just, it's its okay to have fun at a conference. It and was great. We want people to have fun with ELB. Yeah, and it was fun to just bring that part of like, this is a part of our culture. This is who we have yeah. working for us. It was easier to bring you guys on the foosball table. <laughs> so and more people can, can participate. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's very good. Um, after them, this is in the wrong order. Did I leave out? I left out Angel Green. I am so sorry. I'm just gonna have to imagine. That was Angel slide, Green. but we'll tell you about Angel Green. Yes, she, she knocked it out of the park. She works for. Uh, if you're not familiar with her, she works for Coca Cola, currently uh, in their training and development um, as a director of training and development. And she was fantastic. Really amazing. Um, again, jumped in kind of towards the end and blew us away with some of her experiences with Coca-Cola and just fantastic. She really started focusing on, are you kind of a, a mentality of, are you checking the box here? Like, yeah, you can put out uh, e-learning and training and say we did such and such number of hours of yeah, training. Yeah. And she started talking about how when she's asked those questions, um, she says, you're asking the wrong questions. You need to start looking at the outcome of it. What, how are people's, um, how are their performance? How is their performance changing? You know, your workforce, are they different after the training? Are you getting different results? If not, mm -hmm. then your training isn't accomplishing what it should and, and start kind of reverse engineering your training to, okay, what is the outcome we need and how can we actually get there instead of just saying, well, I guess we need to do some training. Let's do that and then we'll be done. Yeah, and nothing's different. I really, really enjoyed her presentation. Yeah. I found an image of her. Uh, let me drag this over so you guys can see. I do feel so bad that we left off Angel Green. 
but uh, there she is demanding a revolution. <laughs> um, in, in she said, uh, one of I, I watched her video again this morning. One of her things she says is, if the technologies and companies that you're working through and with are refusing to grow in technology like the rest of the world, we should stand up and not use them yeah. and demand change. So just super cool, super powerful, really incredible. And Angel, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I should have included you. <laughs> and then after that was Dr. Allen. I know introduced... a lot of people know this guy in the world of e-learning. It's kind of an up and coming. Yeah, he's a hidden gem. No, you. We were super happy to have him there. He uh, um, he was an important piece of the lineup for sure. And um, yeah, I mean, what what can you say about Dr. Allen? He's he's the godfather of e-learning, and um, literally wrote the book on it always gives a fantastic presentation always a ton of information that you can soak in and it's super close to his heart he'd mentioned that he retired uh and then watched where the industry was going and then said you know what i feel like i can still make a difference yeah and then jump back into it yeah that's the kind of connection and closeness to his heart that e-learning is to him exactly. he was getting uh you could hear the emotion in his voice as he's saying we have a stewardship to make learning that is that is high quality and he said the the worst e-learning is the e-learning that doesn't work yeah, yeah. he says we waste thousands of our learners time with bad e-learning yeah, yeah. And he said a lot of people think about what what kind of e-learning e-learning can we afford to make and he said the e-learning we can afford to make is ineffective e-learning incredible incredible uh presentation from dr allen now let's talk about the afternoon well, we had lunch. We had lunch. It was great. Yep. A few people took a quick nap. Some, 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 some people strumming some instruments. We brought some oh, instruments yeah, there and yeah. had some people jamming a little bit. That was really fun. Got a little bit of that on camera. We'll, uh, we'll publish that as well. Yeah. Some rock stars. Awesome. Um, okay. So the first sessions. So there you can see uh, Todd and Rich in the business section talking about eLearning Brothers Custom and some of the business choices they've made there. Um, we also had, uh, at the same time, Stephen Bear from the Game Agency presenting next door about games. And then next door to that, we had uh, Misty and Jen from eLearning Brother Custom talking about, what was their presentation on? I'm, I'm sorry, I already forgot. Let's see. Um, the, um, I'm, by saying the, that the, I the forgot, ecosystem. I think I forced you to yeah, forget. The ecosystem e-learning ecosystem and you can see the funny thing so i was in todd and rich's class and at the beginning they spent the first five minutes saying if you really want a good presentation you should go over to missy and jen <laughs> and they kicked a bunch of they're like eight or nine people that stood up and walked out of todd and rich's to go into missy and jen's and it looks like they ended up standing because yeah they were unprepared uh for todd's well, the rooms were just small uh, i mean i think that in the sessions were very well attended yeah so it was great you know the thing that I liked. <clears throat> obviously, Todd and Rich are humble guys, and they'll they'll always pass people on to or pass praise on to other people. But the thing that I liked about their session, but also just the entire business track, is that for those people, like Dr. Allen was talking about, for those people to say, "What kind of training can we afford?" The business track and Todd and Rich kind of addressed that and said, "Hey, look, here's how you can get the most dollars out of your e-learning." Mm -hmm. Here's how you can good. stretch your budget a little bit. Here's how, and I think at a lot of conferences, sometimes you don't get that because you're speaking to developers, which is important and key, and that's mm -hmm. the largest piece of the pie when it comes to your audience. But this was really valuable for CLOs or other people who are making financial decisions based on e-learning. Excellent. And I'm looking at the, I finally just looked at the list because it's been too long. It's been two days. I already forgot. Um, marrying gameplay and instructional design to optimize learning was Dr. or not Dr. Sorry, Stephen Bear's uh, presentation in the periodic table of uh, instructional design: ten informational, transformational elements to make your project take your project to the next level. That's right. That's right. Um, and then after them, they started another session. This is Bill West talking about vendors, which is phenomenal. I've heard that he gave the same presentation at Devlin, and it was. Yeah. incredible it was, there it, it was, was great, great here. ours was better <laughs> <And that definitely. laughs> 
Probably I mean, his presentation at ELBI. He was but, still giving out books and people were eating it up. It was great. It was good yep. stuff. Lots of good information. Yep. And then next door to him was uh, Bill Milstead and Nick Brown, our amazing team that's over um, Design. our new style templates. If yep. you haven't seen yeah, our style templates. Those guys. Yeah, and I then, was in that session. It was phenomenal. And then next to them was Mike Ruska. Uh, and that was a phenomenal session as well, making awesome technology solutions using design thinking. And I got down to standing room only, I heard on that one as well. Yeah, very, very crowded. It looks like Bill may have sent people over there again as well. That's how it works. Yeah. ELB, ELB says, our presentations are good, but we have guests that you should go and see. It's funny. Works out that way. And then the last section, we had Dr. Marty Rosenheck, uh, our own Chris Willis, who's the mind over our customers with courseware. And then again, like I said earlier, Dr. Anders Gronstadt talking about VR. So just as these awesome breakouts, people were bouncing around from one to the other to get the most out of those breakout sessions. Yeah. You guys have any last thoughts on these before we move on? Just that we were really happy again with the kind of content that we were able to, to share. That was, that was one thing that, um, that was kind of part of the why of why we decided to do ELBX because there are a lot of conferences out there and you know a lot of them are great and we didn't want to just add another uh we wanted to add something that had content that was worth showing up for and um between what we had in-house the, the expertise we have and and those that we were able to, to have come and share along with us we were we were really pleased for that lineup and it kind of sets a tone because this was our first uh, user conference, but it's far from our last. We'll be continuing these, and it was nice to have our inaugural one um, be at a level where it was, and these sessions really played a key role in that. Yeah, I mean, I think the tagline for this year was Get Inspired to Rock. Mm -hmm. And I think it's safe to say that <clears throat> the attendees at, at the end of the morning session, and then again, reiterate, or uh, really solidified at the end of the afternoon sessions, they were inspired to to do their jobs better. Whatever your job was, whether it was an instructional designer or a just business decision maker or whatever, you were inspired to rock your company's e-learning. Mm -hmm. For those of you curious about what Dr. Marty Rosenheck was speaking on, I think that's the only one I haven't mentioned. He talked about talent development strategies for the digital age. And again, I was in on that uh, session. He talked about how knowing how your brain works and how your, your, your learner's brain work it works will change the way you design your e-learning, change the way you execute it. It was very, very cool, very Wait, interesting. If you're looking for someone who understands the mechanics of the human brain and learning, you don't have to look past Marty Rosenheck. He is phenomenal. Yeah, he's a recent addition to our team and one that we're very excited about. He's, he's a huge addition to uh, e-learning brothers and um, part of what we did that wasn't necessarily uh, very outward facing was um, we did set up some one-on-one -on -one sessions between some of these thought leaders and people who could really use some some of that one-on-one -on -one attention. Direct pointers, yeah. And uh, Marty was someone who was highly requested because of who he is. He has a reputation as, of being someone that um, has a kind of information that people need when they're making those decisions. Yep. Obviously yep. knows his stuff. Yep. Really cool. All right. Um, so. The real line, the question we have here is, did people learn a lot? Um, so we had, as you can see, I think you can see, let me see. Yeah, right there, if I move my microphone this way. The hashtag ELBX was uh, trending in Salt Lake that day. And uh, so we, we went and dug around online to see what people thought and what they were saying. Just starting my day excited to be a learner this week, ELBX and Learning Dev Camp. Critical thinking is key for knowing how to ask the relevant questions. Scott Baird invites us to start a revolution. Fun learning about vector graphics in PowerPoint and Storyline and ELBX. Need to start manipulating vectors more in my work. So that would have been one of that probably Those making mix. Bill's yeah. uh, breakout yeah. session. Big shout out to the eLearning Brothers and the ELBX sessions. Check out the posts and shared sessions. Great chance to learn and share in the learning community. eLearning, ISD, Design Matters, etc. So yes, I would say people definitely did learn something, but we're, we're e-learning brothers, so we have to ask the question, did people have fun? Let's take a look at that. 
So this is happening. If I became an e-learning rock star, I'm definitely going for face paint and platform shoes. There's a picture of, of uh, Andrew and, and Curtis there up on stage. Sean Bott is amazing as a mentalist. He knew I have kitten paws, hashtag ELDX. <laughs> so that's a, that's a fun one as well. Always fun talking with my friend and colleague, Michael Allen. Such great insights on learning, teaching and book writing. Great catching up at ELBX. So that was Dr. Carl Kopp. Way too much fun, <laughs> hashtag ELBX. Having a good time and meeting fun people at ELBX. So yeah, I, I would say that people both learned things and had fun. There you go. This is how we conference, says Megan. Is able to go and enjoy. Oh, this is the last part, the luau. Um, and I think I've got more pictures here. So, I mean, while all of the participants had fun, we here at eLearning Brothers also had a ton of fun at EOBX, meeting all of uh, all, all of our fans, all the people that want to come and hang out and have fun. You guys want to talk about the evening festivities? It was really just all about fun. Yeah, the luau was, we thought, listen, what says beautiful Utah mountain June evening? Other than a luau. Than a luau. I mean, Utah is <laughs> famous for its Hawaiian culture. <laughs> and our jazz, which is why we have the Utah jazz. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, uh, you know, it was, as we were planning it, we knew we were planning it in the cold winter. And I think we all wanted to be at a luau. <laughs> so, somewhere else. <laughs> and and it was, it was an awesome, it was well, uh, well carried out, well, well played out. Um, the food was fantastic. The decor you can see there uh, was beautiful, and we we brought in some some musical talent. Uh, mm -hmm. A guy named Junior Miley, who just was he really phenomenal. Yeah, it was like the glue that held it all together. He it was set the mood just right. Yeah, and it was fun. It was a nice way to relax. You know, you're you're engaging your brain all day long, and it was nice to just step outside. You know, relax, have some excellent food, and just visit and have that music and the ambiance. It was it was fantastic. It was yeah. good weather for it too. It was really mild and yeah. We wanted to provide people an opportunity to network a little bit and just yeah. to hang out and have fun. And I think they did that and they had a great time. Yep. After the luau, we did go back inside and and have our minds blown by Sean the Mentalist. Um, I don't have any pictures of that part. Too busy getting my mind blown to take photos yeah. of that one. <laughs> yeah. As Sean said multiple times, I don't show up in photography. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us were definitely questioning, uh, or questioning, yeah, what, what exactly is his relationship with the dark arts? But uh, <laughs> he was phenomenal. It was, it was really fun. Was I was blast. sitting in the back of the room and just watching people turn to each other and be like, what is going on up there? And like, just, it's, it's a fun thing that, to be in that situation where, you you literally are just yeah your mind's blown and laughing sean is a he's very hilarious. very funny man he's a comedy mentalist that's yeah, true. I, yeah i first knew sean doing improv comedy years ago and i i had no idea that he would go the direction that he has with mentalism but he's he's a true professional and he's so entertaining as he does it <laughs> yes and yeah um he he got he got a lot of people up there on stage involved in it, and I think people walked away with some really fun experiences. I know that when we when we came back to the office the next morning, that was what people were talking about was yeah. that show and how did he do this and how did he do that. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah, very true. So the last question is, where will we be in a year? I think it's very safe to say that in a year there will be an ELBX 2019. Um, we are still keeping the details of that under wraps. Very confidential, very top secret. We haven't started planning. It might be ELBY. <laughs> as long as it's not Y E L B, that's, you know. We should do E L B Y Y Z. X Y Z. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, here's a big Rush fan. That was a nod to him. Oh, Y Y Z is the. the uh, zipper, isn't it? No, the that's something else. Yyz is the airport code for Toronto Airport. Mm -hmm. We and do it in Toronto. Later became a rush, song. a rush song. We may be dropping hints here. We may be brainstorming. Yeah, our neighbor we, of the Great White North. Never know. We're poorly brainstorming. If this isn't, <laughs> <laughs> this no, isn't a joke. Honestly, though, like right after this wrapped up, 
I did feel a little bit like the day after Christmas or the day after whatever your favorite holiday is where you're like, there's this mixed feeling of that was so much fun and oh, yeah. it gets over. And so we immediately did start looking forward to next year and start thinking about what we wanted to do to, to like just continue that trajectory of like yep. bringing yep. this, um, the same kind of quality and even bumping it up. Yep. And listen, we would be amiss if we didn't uh, mention Learning Dev Camp. Oh my goodness. And Jason Bickle and all the help that he was to us. Um, so we are, we were day one of learning dev camps. Learning dev camp is still going on today. Mm -hmm. It's wrapping up today. And I mean, what a phenomenal lineup of speakers and presenters that he has also, but just really helping us through our first conference and kind of holding our hands through some things and saying, oh, you guys probably didn't think about this. You need to think about that and work on this and that kind of thing. So it's a little bit of a cliche when people say that you can't say enough about someone, but honestly, that's, that is the case with, with Jason Bickle and with his team and how they, really just made this as uh, the best kind of yeah. uh, experience that we could have hoped for. Yeah. I'm sure there's things he did that we didn't even know he was doing. Yeah. That very, saved our bacon. Very generous guy. And and during that day, even though it was we were we were heading things up, he was very present. He was making sure things were running smoothly. And um, I, I didn't know him before this point, except for in some meetings but he's an amazing guy and um, we were able to do what we did for that one day of learning dev camp because of what he's built yeah. With, yeah. with learning dev camp. And so um, we can't thank him enough. It's a blast. All right, so I guess the takeaway for all of you who did not attend ELBX is you will have a chance to go and see ELBX next he's year. Gotta come next year. Gotta come next year. Amazing. It's gonna be a blast. And do do stay tuned to try and uh, keep track if you have access to our library or if you have a uh, I don't know if it'll be in the free account. Um, yeah, we're, we're still determining exactly how it's going to roll out, but these sessions are going to be available um, in in some fashion. So please, uh, if you weren't able to be there, which it sounded like none of the attendees to the webinar were, but if you're seeing this after the fact and you're wondering what what all was there. As an ELB customer, you're able to go in and, and see these uh, participate in some way at some point. So send you the cover ring. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be great. Oh, thanks all. Thanks for your time, and uh, hopefully we'll see you at the next ELBX. Thanks, guys. Take care.